Marla Riley, would you give us your full name, please? Augustus James Riley. And where do you live? Number three, Apple Close, Fulchester. I believe that you are Miss Terson's immediate superior in her department and that your duties include security. Yes, that's right. I believe that you also had responsibility for the investigation into Miss Terson's conduct between June and September last. Yes, that's right. I initiated the inquiry. Did you make any inquiry about Hans Miller? Yes. I found he was from East Germany and that he was a Communist Party member. Commander, what is the accepted procedure for civil servants when they associate with someone who is regarded as potentially hostile to the British government? File a short report on why the meetings took place and briefly what transpired. Did Miss Terson do that? No. Well, had you given her any instructions uh, to get into contact with members of the East German Trade Mission? No. Rather, it would be said against you that all that Miss Terson did wrong was to fail to report on her meeting with Miller, presuming it was nobody's business but her own, and to take classified documents from their proper place. With respect, that's nonsense. So the correct procedure, even for a senior civil servant like Miss Terson, was to file a report on her meeting with such a man as Miller. Yes. Thank you. Would you remain there, please? Do you know many senior civil servants who break security rules, Commander? I don't know any. Miss Terson will be gratified to hear that. Except the defendant. You seem well informed as to what your fellow workers do <coughs> and do not do. We know it happens that senior civil servants take home classified papers to work on. They usually have a safe to keep them in. However, they do not bring communists back to their houses at the same time such papers are there. I well, suppose you heard of someone taking home a confidential or secret documents, even if they had a safe. What would you do? I should ask them to stop. That's all? Yes. Why did you not ask Miss Terson to stop? Before she removed the documents, she was already under surveillance because of a suspect relationship. Was it because you wanted to accumulate circumstantial evidence, the evidence of association? I was not conducting a witch hunt. Why didn't you stop her the day she left her office carrying the papers in the briefcase so carefully noted by your watchdogs? Why didn't you simply ask her to return the papers? Why let her go home and know when you knew full well that she was engaged in, to use your words, a suspect relationship? For a simple and obvious reason. We didn't know she was carrying them until a search was made later and they were discovered to be missing. You didn't recognize the special foreign office briefcase. How would you categorize your job, Commander? That could take all day. Yes, it could. First, in relation to security. I attempt to keep it. You keep secrets? Secrets. If you like. Mm -hmm. You see, why I ask, it appears from this case that you were prepared to wait until secrets were given away before you acted. I don't follow you. The prosecution hold that Miss Terson allowed an unauthorized person to see classified documents. They're saying she gave away secret documents. What is your point? Well, my point's quite simple. If you were doing your job, keeping secrets safe, surely you would have spoken to Miss Terson when her suspect relationship became known to you. Now, what I fail to understand in this entire business is that you allowed her to continue seeing someone whom you had judged unsuitable without ever once asking her for an explanation of her actions. If a person becomes a security risk, they must be removed. One cannot do so without proof. So now we come to the preposterous <laughs> notion that in order to maintain security, we must wait until someone destroys it before taking any action. It may seem preposterous to you. It's all part of a... Most frustrating, invidious, but essential job of work that anybody with security responsibilities is required to carry out. Yes, but the fact remains, nobody approached Miss Terson during these long months of surveillance to tell her to stop seeing Hans Muller. No. No. You say you waited for her to break the law, to conduct herself in such a way as to endanger the country and these papers. Which she did. Commander, surely that's what we're here to determine. And once again, I ask... Why did no one suggest to Miss Terson that she should stop seeing Hans Muller? The fact that she herself did not report on her activities was in itself incriminating and worth investigation. Commander Riley, what is the policy? When someone such as a civil servant who has access to secret material forms a friendship with a person known to be a communist? 
Usually, my lord, they are reminded of the professional hazards involved and told to stop. But in this case, there was evidence to, to suggest there was more to it than that. More to it than what? We had reason to believe that Mueller was a spy and that Miss Terson was cooperating with him to divulge restricted information. All the more reason to tell her to stop seeing him, I'd have thought. All the more reason to prove our suspicions and thereby remove an untrustworthy employee of the government. Uh, Commander, why do you believe Hans Mueller to be a spy? I am not at liberty to say in open court. Does your information come from an intelligence source? I am not at liberty to say in open court. My Lord, I request that the court be cleared so that we may hear this evidence. I am extremely reluctant to adopt such a procedure, Mr. Elliot, unless it proves absolutely necessary. My Lord. All right, Commander, let's try it this way. Why did you assume that Miss Terson would cooperate with this alleged spy? Are you at liberty to say why, Commander? I'm sorry, my lord, if I upset Miss Terson's sensibilities. I think the mere fact of her presence here has already done that. I had come to the conclusion that Miss Terson was infatuated with Mueller. Her cooperation with him seemed very likely. Could you substitute the words in love with for infatuated? Yes. Well, your conclusion was definite, I take it. Why else did she fail to report her association? After a... An immaculate career, 18 years or more in public service, she neglects the most basic rules of her profession and compounds that by taking classified papers out of her office where Mueller could see them. That, in my view, suggests infatuation. In your view? I can't think of any other explanation. I can, Commander. I suggest Miss Tesson fell in love with Hans Mueller and he with her. I suggest that at no time did Miss Tesson contemplate treason. All she is guilty of is taking documents home without authority. I suggest Hans Mueller did not see the documents nor had any interest in seeing the documents. And I further suggest that you and your staff have put two and two together and you've come up with five. You say you have reason to believe that Mueller was a spy. But since you did not detain him, and since you are not at liberty to give this court proof of your allegations, you cannot expect this jury to accept your assumptions. Commander, could we go further into Miller's background if the court were cleared? I should need to get instruction on that point. Mr. Fry, why was this not given in evidence in chief? It's a question of obtaining authority, my lord. If an authority could be obtained, I would like to recall the commander at a later stage. Very well, commander. You may leave the witness box. Call over James Barclay. You are Herbert James Barclay? Yes. You live at Mapleton House, Little Wingrove, near Fulchester. Yes. What is your profession, Mr. Buckley? I'm a member of Her Majesty's Diplomatic Service. Which department are you currently serving in? Classification of documents. Were you doing this last September? Yes. Would you explain to the court what that involves? Well, I'm responsible for putting the various classified marking on material thought to need it. Would you tell the jury exactly what that means? For instance, a lot of reports come in from various sources which are recommended to have a restricted circulation. My job is to see they get it. What kind of mark do you put on the papers? We use mainly the words top secret, secret, confidential, or restricted, according to their priority. Is this clearly marked? Very. On every page? Yes, top and bottom. Would it be easier to overlook this classification? Perhaps if you're blind. We don't mark in Braille. <laughs> I would like you now to look at Exhibit 1. Uh, the papers over there. <coughs> the jury all have copies, my lord. Do you recognize these papers, Mr. Barclay? Yes. They are marked secret? Yes. Without going into their contents, would you tell the court what they are? They are part of a report from one of our embassies abroad. Did they come through your department when they arrived? Yes, they did. And did they arrive with the secret classification which they now possess? No. Would you explain, please? The embassy was asked to report on the subject involved. They did so and sent back two or three pages. Their contribution was not classified because it was not regarded as any more than open stuff. By open, do you mean that anybody could read it? Yes. Go on, please. Then the report was added to by people in this country and the comments analyzed. It was then that the secret mark was put on. By whom? By me. Just you? Well, no, I... 
I took advice, of course. Uh, but it was my decision. The final say-so was mine. And what happened to these papers after they'd been classified? Well, they were put into a folder marked secret and circulated to the various departments who were interested in the subject. Did these include Miss Thurston's department? Yes, they did. At each place where they rest, are there appropriate security precautions to cater for the sensitivity of the material? Yes. Each office has a combination safe. Anything as highly restricted as this will be put in it at the end of the day, or indeed whenever the office is left vacant for any period of time. Did Miss Thurston have such a say? Yes. On September the 10th last, were you contacted with relation to some of the things to do with your office? Yes. Or would you briefly tell us what it was all about? I was telephoned at my home by the security department. I went back into the office and collected my register. And then I went round to see Commander Riley and other security staff. What is the purpose of the register? It gives the circulation progress of classified documents. Yes? Well, it appears that a search should be made for these. I found in my register that Miss Thurston had signed for these documents. Well, there are copies of the register, but I won't trouble the jury with them unless my learned friend wishes it. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. Would you stay there, please? Mr. Barclay, I'm not going to ask you who sent which set of papers to which department. That doesn't interest me. Very well. I'm much more intrigued by your duties as a classification expert. I am not an expert. As far as this court's concerned, you are, sir. Now then, let's turn to this business of the final sale, so. You say you take advice on how to mark a document, but the final decision is yours, correct? Yes. After taking advice, you decided to mark these papers, exhibit number one, secret. Yes. When you choose the word secret, what does that imply? Well, now, God forbid I should ask you to divulge vital information, Mr. Barclay, just generally. It means that the contents are such that if they were made known to an unauthorized person, it could put the state in great danger. In great danger? Yes. I know that... Now, what exactly... Th Sorry, Mr. Barclay, I interrupted you. Please go on. I was merely going to say, I know that sounds melodramatic. The words are not to be taken literally. I hardly think that this country would be destroyed if this material were leaked. Nevertheless, harm would most certainly be done. Sometimes the word secret is to protect the originator of the report, to stop his identity being made known. I see no originator's name here. There isn't. As it was the analysis that sent this into the rarefied areas of secret. And the additional material. Very well, Mr. Barclay, I take your point. To classify something secret does not necessarily mean that we're all due for extinction if this thing, this document, were leaked. But the originator might be endangered by it. Yes. Mr. Barclay, suppose I were to ask you to read aloud this document in the court. I should have to refuse. I could not do that in open court. Why? <laughs> Well, as I've already said, it's highly classified material. The classification you ordered? Yes. But why did you order it thus? I, I thought we'd been in, into all this. I... Bear with me, Mr. Barclay. Why? My reasons for classifying this document secret are themselves secret. <laughs> Mr. Barclay, as to this document you thought fit to call secret, there's danger to the state. I have here a copy of an article from a foreign newspaper. Now, this predates your secret report, Mr. Barclay, and it's almost a word-for-word -word description on the self-same subject. Now, there's almost nothing in your secret report that's not contained in this article. Now, what I want this court to hear is how it can be that in one form this information is available to anyone with the price of a newspaper, and in another form... It's extremely damaging and dangerous to national security if seen by unauthorized persons. I cannot answer that question in open court. I must insist that you do, Mr. Barclay. Lord, may I respectfully ask for the court to be cleared if the defense insists on pursuing this line? My Lord, I oppose any motion by my learned friend to have this evidence heard in camera. Lord. I ask this question not only on behalf of my client, but also on behalf of the public. Lord, this is an irrelevant issue. Notwithstanding the contents, I submit that the defendant clearly showed a classified document to someone who was not authorised to see it. Silence in court.